Welcome to the Mojo Fit Podcast. I am Neil Cannon, author, nutritionist, and health coach. Here, you'll learn some of the most empowering stories of self-healing. Each person shares their journey of sheer determination and curiosity, and how they found new meaning for their suffering, which ultimately prepared them for a far better life beyond survival, one rich in vitality. You'll also hear from some of the world's leading pioneers in holistic health. Understand these principles, take action on your health, and get your mojo back. Hi everyone, I am super excited to share with you this amazing interview. I have no idea how it's going to unfold, but it's going to be good. And I'll just do a quick intro. This is Elisa Silva, and we met on Tuesday when I was having my ass kicked in yoga, in hot yoga, and she gave this little talk at the end, and it made goosebumps go through my whole body because she is leaving this yoga studio uh, practice to go and help kids break through their trauma and it's just incredible using yoga and mindfulness to break through trauma and not only has she gone on her own incredible journey of healing trauma which I've been learning so much about in the last kind of six months through various friends and contacts I have. Not only has she experienced her own kind of journey, but she's now sharing this with everyone else. And yeah, I just really wanted to share this with you because there's so much to learn about how much trauma can affect us on so many different levels. Uh, If you have an eating disorder, whether you're underweight or overweight, likelihood is it's going to come from some kind of trauma in the past. So without me gabbling like I am, can, can you uh, thank you? Yes, all, thank you so much. This for, is my first time on Facebook Live, so I'm excited welcome. to be here with all of you <laughs> and welcome. share my story. I, I've never been interviewed, so um, I'm honored to be able to share with all of you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, can we start by um, talking us through your story? Because, I mean, you're telling me so much just then, I was just thinking, I want this all to be on the camera, but it's like, it's incredible. So, yeah. Wow, I don't even know where to begin. So, from childhood. Yeah. Just a summary. Yeah. We'll try and keep it to, say, 20, 25 minutes, but we'll see how it goes. So, okay. Bring that in mind. Okay. Um, so, grew up in New York City, and my parents divorced, so I'd go visit my father, and it was um, a pretty intense household, so a lot of screaming and yelling and things that a child should not be experiencing um, at that age, and... Um, I stopped seeing my father when I was about eight years old and um, went to lots of therapy growing up. My mom um, was in and out of the court system until I was about 16 years old, 15 years old. And so she was also experiencing a lot of that abuse from my father and started to eat as a way to um, cope with the stress, I guess. So I would see her overeating and as a family unit my sister and I and her would share meals and they were very unhealthy and um, not the correct portions of what a child should be eating and so I did that all through my childhood and in my teenage years I started to get self-conscious about my weight and how I was looking and what other people thought of me and so um, I started to take a prescription medication called Adderall I Mm. remember in high school. It's not for focus. It is. A lot of people take it for mental focus. It's for, you know, ADD. Back in the day, I tried it. deficit disorder. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used to take it a lot to party. A lot of people take it to party. It's like a form of cocaine, pretty much. Um, It used to make me go jittery. Yeah, yeah, real jittery. It also makes you not eat. And so I took that for a while, and I got really, really skinny. I also tried a lot of crazy diets where I was pretty much starving myself. Um, I know I did Atkins where I was eating bacon and meat, nothing but meat and cheese and telling myself, you know, I was losing weight on it, but telling myself that this was good for me um, because I was losing the weight. And so um, I wasn't feeling so good about myself, even though I did get thin. I had a lot of things inside of me and um, had kind of abusive relationships and um, a lot of depression and anxiety and I resorted to to a lot of drugs and alcohol, and I was partying a lot to just escape a lot of the things I experienced during childhood. And um, I started to travel. I traveled around the world. I lived in Argentina. I lived in Puerto Rico. Awesome. Yeah. And um, 
And then I finally, I guess, found my spiritual practice or this spiritual journey when I when I moved out here. So I had been with a guy, I'd had an abortion, and um, yeah, it was really intense. And um, I got to the lowest point of my entire life, the darkest point of my entire life. And um, I, I mean, I thought, I like there was thoughts in my head that were so dark that it was like, why am I even here? Why am I living? And, um, anxiety attacks and screaming. I'll, I'll never forget one time just being in the shower and like holding myself like I was a baby and just screaming and screaming. And the abortion triggered it, but mm. it was really all of that childhood trauma that I had never dealt with. That's a big thing, isn't it? Even if, um, sorry to interject, no. even, you've gone through pretty severe trauma, but even people who don't consider that they've been through trauma, every single person, whether you're walking, if you're walking, talking, breathing human, you suffer trauma. And most of us are not learning how to get rid of it. And it can manifest in all sorts of different ways, uh, like disease, for example. But, well, and even yeah. in, like, your relationships, like something. Yeah. I mean, I was drawing in guys um, that were like my father because I hadn't dealt with a lot of my things um, I experienced with my father. And so, so I was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was wild. Yeah. Um, but getting into that darkness it made me realize that I had to do something different, that I had to make a really, really big shift. And so I decided, I had been doing work for trade at Hot 8 Yoga, where I met you. Totally so work for trade, you clean up sweaty, it's, it's a hot yoga studio, so people are dripping sweat. And so I was in there, <laughs> it is beautiful. You have 35, 40 people in the room all sweating and smell delicious. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah right, and especially cleaning it up is really Man, delicious, really that? delicious. So I had the mop and I had the towels and I was doing it because I wasn't making very much money. I'd been working with kids, but I wasn't getting paid very well. And I wanted to do um, my yoga practice and I knew that that was the one thing that was bringing me peace. And I didn't really get exactly why, I didn't really understand what was happening at the moment, but I knew that when I went to yoga I felt better. So. I was doing work for trade, and I would trade, and didn't have to pay the hundred and fifty dollars. And I would, um, I would clean up all the sweat. And so then, in this really, really dark time of my life, in this kind of abusive relationship with all my eating disorders, and craziness going on in my mind, I, um, one of the, you know, Deanna, she's the director at Hot Eat Yoga. She teaches there, and you should take her class, Deanna. Okay. She's wonderful. But anyway, she really pushed me to do this yoga training with her. And so I signed up for a yoga training, a yoga teacher training, and I kind of consider my life before yoga teacher training and after yoga teacher training. I've heard training. this so many times. Yeah, and it's, um, everything has changed, everything. So I got out of that abusive relationship. I changed my relationship with food, um, really my relationship with myself and every single person that I interact with and meet. And um, I found God, or whatever you want to call it, for the first time. Source energy, unconditional love, Infinite something that, that is in mm. each and every one of us. Mm. And I had never fully connected to that without taking some sort of a drug or plant medicine uh, naturally. I had never connected to it. I didn't understand meditation. I didn't know how to go within. And so that is really what I took out of my yoga training. And, um, and then... Because it shifted me so much, I knew that I had the responsibility to then share the practice. And I started teaching. So I started I, teaching, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. On Monday, or over the weekend, a friend of mine, who I live with actually, a really good friend of mine, mm -hmm. he said, uh, we went to wear this, let's say, just say a personal growth weekend <laughs> with a bunch of people. And he said this thing that really kind of uh, stuck in my mind. And he said, defenders, defenders and protectors of life do not get sick to prove that they can heal their bodies. They get sick to prove that, or to show others that they too can heal their bodies. Mm -hmm. So to share, to share with the world how you, how you do it. Mm -hmm. And I did a little um, live on Monday, just saying if we just if we just choose to go down a pharmaceutical route, we, we are depriving ourselves of that opportunity to learn and grow and get connected with whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And um, pretty amazing that you've found all that found that all out, and now you're sharing it. So, how long did it take you to kind of, um, you know, when you started at Hot Eight Yoga, that was a few years ago, I guess you still had an eating disorder, I guess you're still kind of 
overweight yeah. and not very happy with your appearance and stuff. And yeah, so my weight would fluctuate, and I would be doing some kind of diet or um, cleanse, and then I would kind of go the other side and just overeat. And it's really about portion size. And because I had those habits growing up of eating these really, really large portions, it was very comforting to me to almost, for some reason, just keep eating and and. I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah. yeah. and so, um, that was two years ago, okay. exactly, and so I started to teach, and, um, started my practice on a daily basis, really that was the big shift, was switching from just doing my yoga a couple times a week, even four or five times a week, to it's every single day, and I do not miss a day, and so, either at the hot yoga studio or practicing on my own, getting into my body, controlling my breath and and really moving my body and holding the poses and then getting into this like concentration and meditative state um, made a huge shift and as I just started to connect with something inside of me and build self-love and confidence mm. I didn't want to overeat as much but it's also that's a major thing yeah that's a major thing because it's like comes back it's almost everything comes back to that well yoga is almost like a trick because you're like oh well, i'm gonna go to yoga especially with the, the heated yoga it's mm. so much more profound but you can't go to yoga with a full belly you can't go to yoga and practice in the heat after you've just eaten french fries or pasta because you mm. feel sick right away so yeah, it's just it's you just can't do it and so it almost tricks your body into those practices that will help you feel really, really good and, and take care of yourself just by practicing on a daily basis. So So you, you're using yoga effectively to practice self-love, in a way? That's part of it. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely part of it. Because I've, I've always thought of yoga as being more of a physical thing for me. Just I, I think it's the best way to look after your entire musculoskeletal system, every single organ in your body, your digestive system, your immune system, everything. And I do find it calming, but I, I've mainly been using it to build and strengthen. And well, and that's I, why it tricks you. So like, like I was saying, yeah. it kind of tricks you into that um, the merging. It's like yoga means union. Yoga is the merging of your mind, your body, and your spirit. So all three yeah. parts of ourselves. It, that's all it is. It's the merging. And so in karma yoga, karma yoga is like selfless service. So in giving yourself to others then you are doing yoga, you are merging your mind, body, and your spirit into one. Wow. So there's many different like facets, and, and it all comes from this very, very ancient text, the Bhagavad Gita, and there's a museum. If you live in L.A., you should totally check it out, and you should go as well. It's my, one of my favorite places in all of L.A., with the best vegetarian, all-you-can-eat buffet that's blessed by Krishna, supposedly. Um, okay. But this museum... What's it's, it called? It's the Bhagavad Gita Museum. So this oh. is the most ancient yogic text, like 5,000 years old. And it's what all yoga that we know today is based off of, is this one text. And so there's a museum and you walk through it and you um, have all these visuals and these little um, like sculptures that, that will move and explain this story to you because it's very hard to comprehend. There's like philosophy classes. People study this text for years for their entire life and still haven't gone through it all and really understood it. And the museum does a wonderful job in explaining the principles. It talks about, you know, reincarnation and... I'm, I'm there. I'm, so, st I'm starting to learn about all this kind of stuff. But now. going back, Super going back, cool. so the merging of your mind, body, and spirit. So mm -hmm. yes, you are like stretching and strengthening your muscles and compressing and squeezing your organs. Mm -hmm. And so you're flushing out toxins. Yeah. So tapas... Can, I just, can, yeah, can we just talk? Yeah, yeah, this is for awesome. sure, for sure. Like, when I started yoga back in 2014, when I first came to LA, I'd heard about it being the best thing ever, and people I, I kind of, you know, follow really rave about it. I did my first session, I felt incredible, and mm -hmm. I started to learn about it as being one of the best things you can do for your immune system. It's uh, because, you, because you do all that, you, you squeeze every part of every organ. You not only strengthen your, your muscles, your bones, your ligaments, your cartilages, your joints, your tendons, everything like that, your musculoskeletal system, but you, you, you do all these twists and you get rid of trauma, don't you? You get rid of uh, energy that's stored in your body. And that energy can be trauma. And we all store it in different places. Like we, I've learned recently, we often store it in our psoas muscles. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've experienced kind of shaking through trauma release exercises. Mm -hmm. But when, I've, when, when someone's got um, suppressed immune system, we're all 
we all have suppressed immune systems unless we're super on top of it. I think it's one of the best ways to build your immune system up. Would you, would you agree? I guess you would. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's, yeah. it's, it's the cure-all. I mean, the, there's so many different ways to practice yoga, but it is the cure-all. It's just it's becoming one with your higher self. So it's merging yeah. this physical body that you've been born into with your soul or your higher, your higher self. Wow. It's merging of your mind, body, and spirit. But the, the coolest thing that I learned in my yoga training that shifted my entire practice that might you know, change things for you was that, yes, we have our skeletal system. Yes, we have the muscular system, the nervous system. And you learn all of these things in school, right? But the one system that I never learned about was our energetic system, the energy system. And so we've got, you know, in, in the East, this is their main focus. And all disease and anything really negative that's happening to you in your body mm. or in your emotions is coming from your energy system. And so they study the meridians. In yoga, we call them the nadis. But there are thousands of energetic channels that run through your body. They run through your muscle fascia. So in the West, in anatomy, you cut away the fascia. And then they separate the muscles into nice neat even little separate things and call them all different names but in the east they study the muscle fascia but the thing is is once you've you know a person is dead you can't experience in those energy channels anymore and so ah. you can't ever see them but they still study them and they're it's a science it's a science where everything is and so that's what these poses work with so these poses have been done for thousands of years if you're experiencing any kind of asana or postures in yoga. What's asana? Asana. For, for a, new, a newbie? It's, and it's me. the postures. <laughs> it's the poses. Yeah. So it's one of the eight limbs of yoga. And, and so they're kind of like, the eight limbs are like these steps. And they're all these steps to oneness. So oneness can be the merging of your mind, body, and spirit. Or oneness can be the merging of your highest self with your ego or your, or your physical body. Wow. And so. I've heard of it like this. Okay. Yeah. And so these energetic channels. So have you ever had acupuncture? No, but I'm going to start doing this. I've got yeah. a knee injury. Yeah. Yeah, acupuncture yeah. is is incredible, and and they work with the energy channels, and you can talk to them about it. They work with your meridians, yeah. and that's where they're putting the different points, those different points yeah. where they meet up. And so, anyways, all these energy channels are going through all of your muscle fascia, and where they meet up, and where a lot of them are crossing, is your chakras. And they start at your root, and they go to your crown of your head, but they even go above you. But we don't really talk about those as much. But your chakras are just energy centers. They're just places where a lot of energy channels are meeting up. And so if there are blockages anywhere in your energy channels, it's going to come up in your chakras and you'll notice different things. So like your lower chakras have to do with like sexuality, sensuality, um, safety. And so you'll notice different parts of your personality or the way that you live or the way that you make your choices mm. are affected by different blockages in your energy system. So this is all your energy system. I never learned about that. That's what yoga deals with. So you form a shape, for instance, a warrior pose. And the reason a teacher will say so specifically, nope, shoulder down, right arm here, nope, your chest a little bit, and all these little tiny tweaks. Once you have that perfect shape, and this has been done for thousands of years, mm -hmm. you're making sacred geometry within your body, and you're, you're triggering those, not triggering, um, it's like an electrical current that is made within those energy channels. So once that energy, once you've got the perfect alignment and those energy channels are fired up, wow. all you have to do is breathe. Yeah. So if you're That's not, if you're not breathing and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like in a, in a pose. Or, or holding your breath. Or holding your breath, you are not doing yoga and you might be stretching your body and you might be strengthening your body, but you are not going to get any of the merging that we were talking about of yoga, that you're not doing yoga. So that's why teachers always remind you too, it's really all about your breath. If you just go in there and, and control your breath and move your breath through your body, you are doing the yoga. So once you have that shape, it's all about purification, tapas, like I was mentioning earlier, which is tapas. just... It's this fire that, what, what, that, what is? that is burning up impurities inside of us, the tapas. And so that's what the, the asana, the postures are all about. Once you create the shape, you have your energy channel. It's an electrical charge going on. You're using your breath now. This is where your prana moves. It's through your energy channels. Prana. So if there's blockages, your chi, mm. people call it, or your prana is not moving the way that it should. And, and that's what causes different diseases or cancers or mm. negative emotions and all of those negative things or things that we perceive to be negative. So anyways, you get into a posture, you focus on your breath, and then you move those blockages with your breath. That alone should be enough for anyone to start yoga. Right? That's super cool. I have not, I've not had it explained to me like that. Oh, and that's what trauma is. Trauma is undigested experiences 
that because we were a child and we don't know how to let them move through us and let them go, we store them in different places in either our muscles or our organs or these energy channels that run through our muscle fascia. And so those different experiences are stored inside of our body. All we have to do is do a posture and breathe. And yeah. those, those Amazing. different traumas can be released. So you can release it. That's incredible. And so that's what's so, happening. That's what's yeah. happening right now as we speak in my life. I mean, yeah. that's, what, that's the work that I'm doing on a daily basis for myself. And that's what I want to now go and share with these children. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've also I've been learning from a friend, Anahita. She's, she healed a chronic pain of three years. And she's been digging deep into trauma release exercises. She's now certified. Uh, I don't know what she calls her, like pain consultant mm -hmm. and um she uses the trauma release exercises which is all about shaking mm -hmm. and um so when animals when animals experience trauma they normally go and shake it off mm -hmm. but we don't we've been conditioned not to do that so we ended up we ended up storing it in our in our bodies whereas if when you do trauma release exercises you can sit lie in a certain position you literally shake your legs and you get you just shake off all the trauma mm -hmm. so it sounds a similar kind of thing. Very similar. And that's so, so as all the same. Here. Yeah, it's all the same. So and same with any training. kind of qigong or any kind of Eastern martial arts. Those are all focused on removing, you know, letting the prana flow that as it should, or your chi flow as it should, and removing your blockages. Wow. It's all the same. That's so cool. Same with acupuncture. It's all the same. Yeah. Amazing. And that's what's happening right now is we're merging Eastern philosophy and and Western, mm. and we're using science to now go through and explain all of these practices that have been done for a very long time. Cool. Talking about the, the Western side of things and yoga, have you heard of the Body Works Museum? No. There's, it's where they present all these different... Um, oh, and they travel around. Yeah. Well, the dead yeah. people don't travel. Well, they do travel. But yeah. Anyway, dead people are preserved. They're, they're, underneath their skin is preserved. Yes. Body Works. And there's a, an exhibition which compares someone who's done yoga all their life and someone who hasn't. Oh, incredible. And the person who's done yoga, they have all these, all the muscles in really good shape. It's nice and taut and flexible and it's just, it, it looks great. And someone who hasn't done yoga, who hasn't done strength training, who hasn't looked after their physical body, it's all dark and it's torn. Everything's just like falling apart. Mm -hmm. And I once heard that with, with muscles, there is no, they, they either grow or they shrink. There's nothing in between which is why we need to work out our body very, very regularly, because it all just falls apart if we don't, if we don't strengthen it regularly. So, um, and yoga is such a great way of doing that. It's, it, and it's fun. You join a class, you, you, you set yourself a time, you get there, you just show up. Just showing up is enough, because then you just do it. Um, and it's, it's not hard, is it? I mean, it's depending on what you... I actually, I actually did a... Um, oh, not a Ashtanga. Ashtanga. Ashtanga, thank you. I, I did that. Uh, Earlier this year, and I had my ass kicked, like, hard. And uh, all these people in front of me, like, putting their limbs where they shouldn't be able to go, like, behind their heads. Or and, where they and should, <laughs> and you just lost touch okay, with that, Okay, okay, right? I've, I've lost touch with that. But, um, yeah, just th throwing their limbs all over the place. And I'm like, how on earth can you do that? How can the human body do that? And we should all be able to do that. It's just that we're so sedentary... And we just sat in chairs all day long, and the worst invention ever for our backs, I've recently heard. So yeah, yoga is just such a fantastic way of um, strengthening the whole body as well. Well, and that's the th and it's also a way of just getting to know your potential. Mm. And that's what I've discovered is like I'm I keep looking younger every single year. I'm 30 now. No way. I look better than I did when I was 18 years old. Like that's right. yeah, I mean I'm 90. And even and even in my skin and even in everything and, and your potential in doing any kind of sport or any kind of dance or any any kind of activity even mm. the mental clarity and what I'm able to um, remember and produce and create these days it just keeps getting better and better and better and that's what my yoga practice is all about and it's also just this hour a solid hour every single day that I devote to myself yeah. so not on any distractions on what I'm seeing mm -hmm. it's the, like the ultimate self-love Self yeah, care. I love that. I love that. It's so easy, again, in today's high, fast-paced, competitive world, we're just constantly looking at our phones, we're connected to electronics all the time, and no one ever takes time out for themselves to really give themselves that self-love. And it's, it sounds really kind of woo-woo, doesn't it? But giving yourself that hour is so powerful. So here's the craziest part, okay? 
The craziest part of all is that all of the poses that you'll ever do, if you ever go to a yoga class, the poses or the postures, which is one of those eight limbs, are kind of like these steps. You don't have to do them in order, but all it is for is to get your body able to sit in a meditative seat. No way. So moving, you probably can't see my legs, but in a lotus position. And so allowing your feet to be up near your hips, allowing your spine to be straight. And so just sitting in this lotus position in a meditative seat is the goal of all of the poses that you'll ever practice. Wow. And so when you're in a meditative seat and your spine is straight, those chakras that I talked about before, so just those places where a lot of energy channels are meeting up along your spine, they start on the crown of your head, they go down to your root. When everything is clear, your entire energy system is clear, your chakras are clear, you are clear, you become like a tube. So my, my yoga teacher explained this way, my yoga teacher in New York. So you are like this tube um, or a channel for God, unconditional love, um, source energy, whatever you want to call it, to, to come through. And so as you close your eyes and you go inward in your meditative seat, every answer, and so all spiritual teachers teach this, every answer is inside, right? Mm. And so when you sit in the meditative seat, for a long period of time and you practice and practice to the point where you can clear out all your thoughts to the point where you can not have different pains in your body and not have all of these different things come up because you've cleared all that stuff out and purified, then you can be like this clear channel. And then once you can be in this meditative seat, the last and final step, samadhi, is when you just completely embody it. And so then in everything that you're doing, you have all of the answers from within. Wow. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yoga so is life. So yoga is everything. And, and yoga in the West is, you know, a lot of people have their different perceptions that it's about these poses when really that's a teeny tiny part of what yeah. yoga is. It really is. So what are, what are the eight steps? So there's... I should know this. I've been doing yoga for like three and a half years. So there's asana. And so yeah. that's the postures, yeah. right? So there's pranayama. Okay. And that's, and that's, the that's kind of like the next step. No, pranayama is your breath. Which oh. is the energy. So, so the breath is our link to the spirit world. So yes, we have this 3D world that we're experiencing every day. I can touch you. You're this person. All these things that I see. This is a table. But there is another world that we don't see. And it's here right now. Mm. And, it, and it's energy. It's like this golden light. And... Um, I've, yeah. I've experienced it I've for experienced myself, it. totally, it. and it's, it's hard incredible. to explain with words, I'm trying to right now, but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a spirit world, and it's here with us all of the time, and um, your breath is what links you to that other world, so the breath is, is, is spirit, and, and it breath, and it comes from the word, word espire, which means to breathe, spirit. Mm. And oh wow, yeah, and so that is our link to the spirit world. And so all we have to do is close our eyes and breathe, or do different breath work, and and mm. we'll be able to experience the spirit world. So there's the the postures, which is all about purification. So if you've got a lot of extra weight on you, and all of these things that you're storing, and all of this tightness, and all of this stuff going on, you are so stuck in this body and all of these things that you will, uh, it'll be hard for you to sit there and breathe. So you do mm. the postures, and you start to purify the body. And every time gets easier. Oh, uh, totally. Literally every single time gets easier. Totally. Yeah. Sorry, and, kind of. Yeah, it is fun, like you were saying too. Yeah, it's super I love fun. it. It's, it's, I love it. It's getting to know your body, but the thing is, the postures will bring up a lot. Mm. Because the postures will show you how have you been eating, how have you been moving, how have you been sitting, how have you been living your life, and mm. what are you holding on to from your past? That's what the postures will teach you. And it's all about purifying that top us, getting rid of all of those things that you're holding on to and um, letting go of the different parts of us that we don't need, that don't serve us. Yeah. yeah. And so you do the postures, then you do your pranayama and you start to breathe. And you'll, as you get deeper into your practice, you'll probably mm. get more into the breath. And so then you've got one point concentration. So I talk a lot about focusing your eye gaze on one dot, your drishti. Mm. So it's your one point focus. And so with the mind, if you take your eye gaze to one point, so even right now, if you have your eyes on one point and you do not move that point, your mind has a harder time going all over the place. And so one point focus 
calms down the mind, you know, steady eyes Hence and steady why it's minds. Good for building focus and concentration. Exactly. Yeah. And so then concentration. So then you extend the periods of time that you're able to hold a one point focus. That's the next step. That's mm. another limb of yoga. And that's what you do when you're sitting. And you know, those that time period will keep increasing as you practice more. And so then you move into like a meditative state where you are holding, you don't even need to have the one point concentration because you are just holding that space. And the last part is when you merged all the parts of you in Samadhi. I think wow. that was eight, yeah. Okay, incredible. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's so much awesome information, I'm blown away. And I wanna go do yoga right now. I know, right? So, <laughs> Same. I'm gonna go after I leave here, actually, I've if injured, you wanna catch a class. I've injured my knee, I did it in March, and uh, it's taking forever to heal, snowboarding. Um, so just going back to your own personal story, you, you've used yoga to, you know, heal, get, heal to release just trauma. To really heal your trauma. Mm -hmm. This is huge. Um, and we can all do it. We can all do this because we are all walking, talking, breathing bundles of trauma. <laughs> and we, whether we like to admit it or not, we all have trauma. It's for some people it's more severe than others, but we all have it. And unless we find a way to release it, it's going to build up, it can manifest disease. I think you can get nutrition spot on, I think you can get, you can be physically active, but if you've got underlying psychological problems, mental blockages, trauma from the past, that's enough to completely override all that stuff and manifest disease. So, um, yeah, I've been learning so much about trauma in the last six months and it's, it's blown my mind, thanks partly to my good friend Anahita who's got this. I'd love to meet her. Yeah, you yeah. should totally meet her. Yeah. I mean, you're looking fantastic now. You look like you're on a superb journey, and you're going to go and teach children how to do this as well. How cool is that? It's pretty epic. And you, t you, you told me some horrific stories about what they've been subjected to. Um, you're going to be working with them using yoga and mindfulness, meditation, to help them connect to themselves. And Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Super cool. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for all the work yeah. you're doing. What, would you, what kind of advice would you give for someone who's brand new to yoga, who's never even considered it, um, but they've heard about how cool it is? Maybe they're fearful of going into a studio or... Normally, if you're practicing yoga for the first time, you're going to go and do some postures. Mm. And um, just know that the two things that you should focus on, two things, is your eye gaze on one point. The yeah. entire class. And so you'll forget and you'll be looking all around. You'll look at other students and you'll be trying to figure out where your body is in space and all of that. But just keep going back and keep reminding yourself of a dristi, a one-point focus. And the second thing is your breath. So controlling your breath. And normally in a yoga class, you would do like an ujjayi breath. Either way, it's in through your nose and out through your nose. So maybe you start to count in the beginning. Maybe it's a three count in, a three count out. Try to do it steady in steady out so you're not ever heavy breathing and so those two things will actually start to merge all those different parts of yourself so if you just go in there and you're looking around you're stretching and moving your body yes you may get a great workout yes you may stretch your muscles and you still will feel good but now if you also combine your eye gaze one point focus that concentration and your breath it will now connect your spirit your mind body and your spirit and so then you really will be practicing yoga. So just focus on those two things. Yeah, yeah. awesome. And yeah. don't be shy. I had my ass kicked at Ashtanga yoga, and it was funny. I laughed at it. I was, I was the worst person in the class. Well, just, and just remember, when you go into it, you're, you're going to be triggered. You're going to yeah. have that stuff come up, and that's kind of the point of it. It's like, mm -hmm. yes, let's get into our subconscious. Let's get into those things that you know, we don't like about ourselves to now go in, see what's actually going on inside and heal it. It's and a real is, mind game. It it's totally It's such is. a mind game. Such a mind game. You, yeah. You just realize, and, and they talk you through all that, don't they? they say, you're you're going to meet resistance. Think where this shows up elsewhere in your life. What's, when you can kind of get work through it and have faith that it's going to get better, you breathe into the pain. I didn't realize before I started doing yoga three and a half years ago that you can breathe through pain. You can inhale through the pain and it goes. When I, yeah, I do well that's through. what you're supposed to do. That is yeah. the tapa. So you get yeah. into a posture, that's the whole point of the posture. People yeah. want to just get right out of the posture as soon as they feel anything. But the whole point of the posture is once you start to feel that fire, that is tapa. So you are burning up all of the things that we talked about. You're burning up your trauma. You're not just burning up fat. You're burning up your 
stuff you're holding onto in your energetic system. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You so you hold yeah. those poses. When the fire comes, that's when you're that's doing. That's when the magic. That's happens. when the pose starts. That's when the pose starts, and you do not get out. You hold it and you breathe. I'm dying now. <laughs> yeah. I want to go and do it now. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Did you know that under oxygenation of cells is the number one reason for chronic disease? And I have not, a lot of people enough. that are doing different things to oxygenate their cells. Yeah. Illegally, it's... even. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I heard this at the Truth About Cancer Live Symposium. Most of us are breathing using the top third section of our lungs. We're neglecting the bottom two thirds. So we're not getting enough oxygen to our cells. So yoga is just one of those ways to consciously breathe, isn't it? And, and we should be doing this all day long anyway, setting our alarm and making sure we're breathing and... Yeah. You can change your state like this when you, when you breathe just for a few minutes, can't you? Totally. I can teach you the king of all yoga, the master, master. Like it's, oh, yeah. yeah, it's um, it's just a breathing exercise, but it's the most gnarly, intense breathing exercise you've ever done. But you do it 11 minutes a day. You don't need to have any asana practice. You don't need to do anything no. else. But this, it's called a kriya. So it's just Is that like breath, breath work? work? Mm -hmm. That's breath work. Yeah. I, I did that in Tulum and I did that in Bali. It was amazing. Yeah, when I you notice the effects on all the cells of your body, you can yeah. change your DNA. I mean, it's like really intense. I had Kundalini out of yoga body is experiences with that. Everyone try Kundalini yoga for sure. Is what's that one again? So it's where you're doing kriyas and you're using your breath. You're okay. doing very simple movements. So even if you have injuries or you're maybe older, or you have a harder time doing some of those hardcore ashtanga or asana practices. Try a kundalini yoga class. Yeah, I need to do that as well. You're sitting most of the time. Amazing. Doing breath work. Okay, awesome. All right, yeah. We could talk for hours. <laughs> I know, okay. right? I know. <laughs> Where can they find you? I mean, if there's someone who wants to work on, say, an eating disorder, if someone's maybe anorexic, or if someone's obese, or, you know, if they want to work on their... On that kind of stuff, can they contact you? Or? Yeah, totally. You can totally yeah. contact me. I'm here. I think he posted my name um, on Facebook. That'd yeah. be great to mess private message me for sure. I'm at Hot Eat Yoga. My last week is next week, so come catch class. Yeah, if you're in LA, Aliza is an amazing instructor. So I do privates as well. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, I've really enjoyed that class. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you so much you're again yeah. for uh, giving us your time, sharing your amazing wisdom and knowledge. Uh, it's life-changing stuff, this. It's life -changing yes, it stuff. is. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Oh, I've had a few comments. Cool. Thanks for watching, everyone. Share it, please, if you found this useful. It's life-changing stuff. It's amazing. So, uh, even if we do say that so. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to the Mojo Fit Podcast with me, Neil Cannon. Head to mojofitpodcast.com for more empowering stories of self-healing. Subscribe to the Mojo Fit Podcast and be notified of upcoming episodes. If you found this useful, please spread the love and rate and review this episode. And get your mojo back at mojofitpodcast.com. <laughs>